Hi guys and welcome to Studio Wildlife. In this video I'm going to show you how Amber painted this tiger and cub painting in acrylic paints. Amber paints the majority of her work on wooden panels that she prepares herself. I will put together a video showing you exactly how we prepare these wooden panels later on, but I've just not got around to it yet. She starts her paintings with a quick pencil sketch and then applies the paint over the top. For this painting she's starting with a large flat brush to block in the background. She's using mixes of greens and yellows and a little bit of white to create a blurred grassy effect. As with all her paintings she starts with a quick drawing. This is where she's blocking in the shapes of the stripes. This is quick and done with a small filbert brush. This piece was actually done as a commission and has sold and Amber loved doing it. We both love painting like this, we both love these commissions so if you do ever want anything from us just contact us via Instagram, via YouTube, via our emails, via our websites and just let us know, get in touch. We are actually saving for a house so the more of you that do get in touch and commission paintings the better it is for us so we do really really appreciate it. Once she's got her initial base layer down she actually starts by refining the stripes a little bit more using just a mix of black and brown acrylic paint and she just uses a small brush to do this. She'll then build up the layers of the tiger using white, mixing that white with brown and yellow and just building up some fur detail. It's important to mention that this isn't the final stages of detail, this is just building up that underpainting, showing some of the direction of fur to make her job a little bit easier later down the line. So she repeats this process for the entire cub's body, just building up a little bit more detail, just showing the direction that that fur will eventually go in when she's ready to start with the final layers. She repeats the blocking stage for the adult tiger, again using mixes of burnt umber, burnt sienna and yellow ochre with touches of white. We have actually found a new colour that we use for tigers called Mars Orange. Um, it doesn't really come in very many brands. One that we found where we found it was the Arteza brand of paints and it's really nice for tigers because it's just got a nice vibrant orange colour that's not too saturated or too bright. So she just repeats the process of blocking in using those filbert brushes just for the rest of that adult tiger just blocking down a base layer of paint slightly darker then the final painting will appear so that we can leave some of those colours underneath. It is important to note it's not black that she's putting down, it is colours that are very similar to what the final appearance will be, just a shade or two darker, just as a reference to build up from. Once that's complete she moves on to the details and for this she uses a small detail brush. The detail brushes that we use are from a brand called Boldmere. We get them for really cheap at a shop here in the UK called The Works and they usually last one or two paintings before they fray a little bit and they aren't really good enough to use for this detail work but that's all we need them for. They come in packs of five so you've got loads of detail brushes in there and they are incredibly cheap. It's about a pound for five brushes and as I said they are perfect for these tiny details. Going back to the house thing and how we're saving up for one, we do really appreciate all of your support and one of the things that we are starting to do is sell prints of our work. Not all of our work, so commissions are usually excluded, but most of our original work we do actually offer prints of. So we would really appreciate it if you could check out those prints and maybe even buy one for yourself. And you can find a link to those in the description below. You can find them on the Studio Wildlife shop. And I've got loads of prints available that you can buy, all in various sizes, so small, medium and large. Here in the UK that would be a 4 
A3 and A2. I'm not sure how that converts to actual sizes in other countries, but you can see the dimensions on the website. Amber paints fur in a very, very similar way to me. If you would like to learn more about how we paint tigers, I do have a video detailing how I paint a tiger and a specific longer video on how to paint chunks of tiger fur, where I go into detail on the colors, the brushes that I use, and the different techniques I use to paint tiger fur. And this applies to Amber's technique and approach as well. So I'll put a little card up so you can see that now. The way that Amber actually paints is using very, very thin washes of paint. And we call this glazing technique. I will also do another video explaining exactly what glazing is and how you can use glazing to change colours, to do different layers and add details to your paintings. It's in the works, it will be one of my next videos so make sure you subscribe to the channel and stick around and wait for that. Another thing that people always struggle with is grass, so I will put another tutorial specifically about it, but you can actually see here in this video how Amber paints her grass. She starts with a very dark layer and then builds up using a sword liner, some longer strands of grass with a lighter colour. And it's pretty much the same approach to painting long fur. Think of grass as just painting fur, and it's just about leaving big enough gaps between your strands and varying the direction and the curve of those strands to add interest to your painting. It's pretty much the same process as painting fur, but I will do a full tutorial on this as well, because it is something that people struggle with, especially if you're painting wildlife, you do sometimes want to incorporate the backgrounds, and a lot of that wildlife can be found in grassy areas. If you are a wildlife artist or you're painting hair or fur or grass like this, you do need to get your hands on one of these sword liner brushes. They are perfect for paintings like this. So one example that we use them for is the whiskers. They create brilliant fine lines, but they still allow you to have lots of pigment in your paint, which allows for these bright white whiskers. So here's the finished painting. I hope you've enjoyed the video and found it relaxing and sort of helpful. I know this wasn't my usual tutorial video, but I hope you've still gained something from watching it. As always, please make sure to subscribe to the channel because it does mean so much to us. We really do rely on your guys' support. And please head on over to the Studio Wildlife website for more wildlife art tips. Thanks guys, bye.